Hey guys, it's Layman Blake from Redefined Horizons. And I'm going to work on a set of videos here that shows you how to prepare what I call a modern meets and bounds lands description. Uh, I'm going to walk you, I hope, have time to walk you through all the way through that process from start to finish. And um, you know, it's going to be a set of videos. I don't know how many, probably several. Um, so. The very first part of that process is to create closure reports so that we can get the bearings and distances that we need for our description. So that's the meets part of a meets and bounds description. And don't worry if you don't know what that means. I'm going to explain all that as we go through this set of videos. So uh, this is more, the goal of this video series is more to teach you the process that I use. Different land surveyors have different processes. I'm not saying that my that my process is better. It's just one of the ways you can do this. Um, and the, pro the process is somewhat software specific. So depending on the software tool you use, your process is going to be a little bit different. And there are many styles of land, of land description as there are land surveyors. So the process might change a little bit depending on the surveyor that you're working for. Uh, so, but I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through my process. So and um, I got online, I got on YouTube yesterday, and I couldn't find any good videos that show specifically how to work with closure reports and parcel objects in Civil 3D um, for the specific purpose of writing land descriptions. So I want to show you guys how to do that in this video. So this is for an actual job that I'm working on. And uh, it's in the city of Tracy, and Tracy, California. And what I have here is basically the subject parcel line. Okay, so this is a parcel, and what we're going to do is um, there's some old lot lines in here that I'm not going to show you because they're not important, but um, we're going to take some of those old lot lines, and we're going to do a lot line adjustment, and we're just basically going to split this in two in a, in a different location. So right now there's three parcels. We're going to get rid of one parcel and just have two left, and we're going to move the line dividing the parcel to kind of fit the physical occupation that's here. And so this is what I call a boundary design drawing. And that's where I, I put the line work to create the actual parcel objects and um, that you need to get the closures in Civil 3D. And this is kind of where I document the design of the parcel layout or parcel configuration. And that that's not finished here, but I have enough. This line work is survey grade. This is the line you're looking at here. Right here, the shape is the result of a boundary survey, good boundary survey. So these are very accurate lines. And this is what we're going to use to build our land description. I'm trying not to wiggle the mouse around when I talk because it really drives my nephew Julian crazy. So, all right, that's a habit I'm trying to break. So I'm going to go into the layer manager here and I'm going to turn on uh, the design line. So survey boundary line, parcel design. I'm going to turn that on. And now you guys can see this is the new dividing line. So we need a meets and bound lands description for parcel one up top and parcel two on the bottom. And I'm gonna show you guys how to write those. So the first step is to get a closure report because we're gonna use those meets and bounds. Sorry, we're gonna use those meets, the bearings and distances. Meets means measure. It's a French word for measure, measurements. We're gonna use those measurements, the bearings and distances as the skeleton of our land description. And we're going to add controlling calls to that. That's the bounds part of a meets and bounds land description. So the first thing I need to do to get a closure report out of Civil 3D is I need to create some Civil 3D parcel objects. Okay, and don't worry if you don't know what a closure report is. I'm going to explain that. Okay, so the easiest way for me to do that, I, just me personally, is I like to have a close polyline around my shapes, and then I turn that into... A parcel object. So I have a layer where I've traced these lines. You can also sometimes use the region command or the boundary command. Uh, but I've traced those lines and I have them here on a layer called uh, area calc. Okay. So what I want to do is uh, I want to freeze everything but this area calc layer. slow sorry about that let's make zero current first of all okay so 
all we have now is these two polylines. So you can see that correspond to the subject parcel line around the edge and the new design line in the middle. Okay, so I want to create some new parcels for that. So let's close this drawing recovery manager. We don't need that. I'm going to widen out the tool space here a little bit. You are going to need the tool space because we're working with civil 3D objects. So you can see I'm in the prospector tab. Now, parcels live inside of a site. And depending on how you're doing your commencement parcels, which we aren't probably aren't going to mess with in this example, but you, you, uh, you can't have parcels overlap. And sometimes you have parcels that overlap. Uh, so, for example, if we were writing land descriptions for transfer parcels as part of this lot line adjustment, so we're only doing the end result parcels, the final parcels, but if we had to do the transfer parcels, and some, some jurisdictions make you do the existing parcels, then we would have parcels that overlap. And you can't do that in the same site. Again, if you're doing commencement parcels, that might overlap with your uh, actual body parcels. You can't do that in Civil 3D. So you have to put those in a separate site. But for what we're doing today, I think one site's going to work because we're not going to have overlapping parcels. So I'm going to make a new site. And we're going to give Civil 3D a minute to catch up with us here. All right, and it's pretty simple. You just have to give your site a name. So I'm going to call these final parcels just in case I have to come back into this design drawing. I might have to create another site called existing parcels or transfer parcels. So I'm going to call this one final parcels. Uh, if you don't have a name handy, you just call it site one if you want. Okay, so I'm going to create a site. So all that does is create a bucket that we can put stuff in. So here's my final parcels site over here in the prospector you can see a site can contain alignments feature lines grading groups or parcels this is stuff that engineers use most of the time this is what i'm in here for the parcels collection so i'm going to come in here and actually i'm not we don't have anything in there yet so we need to create a parcel so once we have a site created final parcels we can come up here to the parcels menu and we're going to say we're not going to do create parcel by layout that's a whole nother video <laughs> this is really easy we're going to create parcels from objects Okay, so that's a tool that just creates parcels from polyline. So it says select the object. So I'm going to grab my first polyline. And it's going to pop up a dialog. So it's going to say, hey, what site do you want to put these in? Final parcels, that's why I created the site first. What parcel style do you want? You can use parcel objects if you're doing like subdivision maps. And you can set up labeling styles. I'm not worried about that because that's not what I'm in here for. So I'm just going to leave it at the standard. Okay, same thing down here. I don't care about these labels. I'm just going to take the default. I don't need to add segment labels. Now, this is important. This says, hey, do you want to erase the existing entity? Most of the time, I do not want to do that. So I'm going to say no. Uncheck that. I'm going to hit OK. Now, I will tell you, parcels are one of the buggiest things in Civil 3D. <laughs> so maybe surfaces are the only thing that's buggier than parcels. So that doesn't always work. But if it works, you'll know because you're going to get a label. So we have a label here, and I have uh, a new, uh, what looks like a polyline, okay? And they actually call that a parcel segment. So that's important. If you want to select the parcel segment, you don't grab the line, you grab the label. That's the parcel object. That's eh, a little funky. I don't know why they did it that way. So one thing I do like to do in here, even though I'm not super worried about these labels, is I do like to select the parcel after I've created it and give it a name because standard one is kind of stupid, <laughs> a little bit ambiguous. So I'm going to call this parcel one. You know, or it might be stormwater uh, access easement or uh, stormwater easement one or access easement two. You know, give it a name that makes some sense. All right. So that's done. I got to wait for AutoCAD to catch up here. AutoCAD lags a little bit when I'm using the screen recorder at the same time. All right, so we're going to do that same process again for this parcel on the bottom. Select that polyline. We're going to put it in the final parcel site because they don't overlap. We can do that. I'm going to take all the default labels here. I'm going to erase. I do not want to erase the existing entity, so I'm going to uncheck that. Okay, now. This one makes me a little nervous because it doesn't look like I got a label. So there is a problem here. And I don't know what it is. So let's go ahead and refresh this site over here. And you can see it gives us a little plus now. 
So yeah, it didn't like something with parcel two. So usually the reason it does that is because you've got a gap or an overlap. So I probably have a gap or overlap here on this common line. So let's see if we can find out where that's at. So what I'm going to do here to make sure that I don't have any gaps is I'm just going to pull this parcel at the bottom down and then back up. So, I'm, so I make sure I'm snapping on the same nodes. And I'm going to go through and do that for every node. All right, guys, so I was having a little bit of trouble there with my geometry. I had some gaps and overlaps along this line here. So once I got that fixed, I could go ahead and create both those parcels. So you can see I got a parcel one, parcel two now. And I know that worked on the south because unlike the first time I did it, now I've got the label. So if you get the white line or you get the parcel segment, it might not be white depending on your layer. Um, but you don't get the label on the inside, then you don't have a parcel. So you got to look for your problems. So you can see now if I refresh the sites, now I've got parcel one, parcel two. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you real quick how to run a closure report. And then we'll, we'll stop the video because I try and keep them to 10 minutes and I'm a little long. So if you just right click on the label, you're going to pull up not your properties, but your, but there's a separate command here called parcel properties in the pop up menu. You're going to pull that up and you're going to come to the analysis tab. This is where you generate your closure report. And there's a couple things you want to do. You want to go from inverse to map check. You want to enable map check across the cord. And then you always want to pick your POB when you're writing land descriptions. So I always like to pick a point on my design line because my design lines don't move. Whereas uh, my parent parcel line, my subject parcel line on the outside can move depending on how it's resolved. So I'm going to say, eh, this looks like a nice spot right here. As a general rule, surveyors go clockwise. There are times when you go counterclockwise, but in this case, I think uh, clockwise will work fine. So I'm going to leave it clockwise. I'm going to pick this uh, begin or end of curve point. There's my POB. And then you can see here, this is giving me the closure report. Okay, So it's got northern easting, the segment, the course or bearing and distance, and then the, the uh, final northing and easting. And then down at the very bottom, it gives you your mathematical closure, error, and your precision, and the area, and some other stuff. Okay, so this is basically what we want. Okay, but uh, we're going to tweak our settings a little bit. So this um, is so we have less editing to do when we get into Word to write our land description. Uh, but I'm going to show you that in a different video. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video on the set.